Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News. I am your host, Nathaniel Rufflejance. And yes, folks, Eric is still fired. Maybe I'll rehire him in time for the podcast tonight. I don't know. He's been MIA. Granted, partially my fault. In fact, last time we were doing a podcast, he was doing Dungeons & Dragons. As if Dungeons & Dragons is more important than the work we do here at Nintendo Prime. Because after all, reporting on Nintendo news is the most important thing you're going to hear today in a video. Our first story today actually is about the Famitsu sales reports from Japan from July 8th through July 14th. The sales data is in and oh boy is Nintendo Switch dominating. Nintendo Switch owns nine of the top 10 spots including numbers one through nine and in fact what's interesting is the playstation 4 that takes up the 10th spot has attack on titan 2 well attack on titan 2 is also on the list for nintendo switch just two spots higher so just something to keep in mind splatoon 2 did not make the top 10 and has not really been in the top 10 for a little bit now so uh, it might be time for that game to finally start slowing down as we move into other releases mario maker is still at number one as you're seeing on screen right now and there was actually a really nice debut for god eater 3 on nintendo switch at number two at over 20 20,000 units sold. Mario Maker's over 300,000 units sold. And you're seeing the entire list now, and there's a lot of notable things happening. Also, what's interesting is the Nintendo Switch itself sold 55,000 units. And if you actually look at the sales chart for all platforms, Nintendo Switch is so far ahead of everyone else, it's almost like it's not worth even talking about them anymore. Although, interestingly enough, the PlayStation 4 that's at the number two spot sold almost like within 10 units of what it sold the week prior. That's very interesting to note anyways. Uh, obviously, we expect a big sales boost coming up ahead with the release of Fire Emblem Three Houses. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 also releases tomorrow. Uh, we'll see if that has any impact for the upcoming week of sales. Oh, and remember, when it comes to all of this, we have the Switch Lite and a Switch Revision coming out soon, and both of those could obviously impact sales in a massively positive way on the hardware side. Uh, and we'll see if that gives any boost to, well, the software side as well later this year. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 already released on Nintendo Switch, but now a new version of the game is coming that they're not calling a trial, but that's basically what it is. It is the light version of the game that also released on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 back in March of this year. The light version contains five story episodes, online battles, online quests, access to the hero Coliseum, and save transfers to the full game. Now, it is supposed to come later this summer. There's no date given or specific dates. You'll only be able to play it for a limited time. Uh, so it's just something to keep in mind that this is more of a trial uh, than a, an actual demo because demos you can basically play almost forever most of the time trials you can't this is kind of like having the full game but not having the full game if that happens to make any sense i don't know why they're doing this they're calling it a free to play uh light version of the game but it's a limited time offer so i think it's just a trial i wouldn't call that a free to play version of the game because it's not really free you have a limited time frame to actually enjoy it. So anyways, uh, that's coming later this summer. I thought it was worth pointing out. I know there's a lot of you guys out there that enjoy the Dragon Ball stuff. I'm personally not a big Dragon Ball fan myself. But hey, what can you do? At least I know who Goku is. I mean, that's... That's something. That's got, that's, that, that, that counts, right? The first review scores are in for Fire Emblem Three Houses. And when I say review scores, I really just mean one. And that is, of course, Famitsu Magazine, who almost always has the very first review score for every game that comes out of Japan. And that review score is a 37 out of 40. This is actually the exact same score they gave Mario Maker 2. Now, Famitsu is not always known as the most reliable for reviews unless it happens to be the fabled 40. 40 out of 40, which they do not hand out very often. Uh, there's been other games I've given in the past that they've given 37 out of 40s to uh, that ended up not necessarily holding up once the Western reviews came out. So we will have to wait for the Western reviews of Fire Emblem to get a fuller picture of this. And Fire Emblem doesn't come out for like a week. Uh, what's actually interesting here is we've got stuff on this, but we have nothing for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 releases tomorrow, and reviews everywhere are still not up. There's previews, there's people live streaming like the first chapter of the game, but we still don't have reviews. And that's because 
The review embargo officially releases at 7 p.m. Eastern this evening. So unfortunately, they were not unveiled in time for this video for me to give you news on that. Uh, so it'll be have to be covered in a future episode or video or something if I decide to cover it at all. Uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, I think, is being massively overlooked. So while this story is really about the review score of from Famitsu for Fire Emblem, we don't learn a lot from that review. So I'd rather just use this as an opportunity to say, hey, Famitsu, it's great that you did this it's great that you have a mario maker score in the same issue why are we not talking about marvel ultimate alliance 3 i have no idea uh it needs more attention so please folks do not skip out on marvel ultimate alliance 3 uh you know if you don't want to purchase it right now wait for the reviews to come out tonight apparently uh and then make a purchasing decision because i am hearing some very good things and what i played at e3 was excellent what i have seen in the live streams has been excellent everything about this game is excellent if you think this is just some mobile game uh you have another thing coming this is a very high quality next gen version of the ultimate alliance game made by team ninja by the way who if you enjoyed things that they make like all you know hyrule warriors or fire emblem warriors uh, there's no reason to think that this is going to be any worse of a game in fact it looks better in many regards today the final splatfest has launched with chaos versus order it's a splatocalypse i think i said that right i literally have 18 different recordings of me saying it, whichever one sounded the best, that's what you're getting. Uh, and this Splat Acalypse uh, could be huge. Not only is it the longest one, where it's starting on a Thursday and running until the 21st, so you're getting basically three to four full days of Splatfest action. And not only is it the final Splatfest for Splatoon 2, it also could have major implications for Splatoon 3. This is because the final Splatfest in Splatoon 1 actually affected the story that happened in Splatoon 2. And we have news out there that Splatoon 3 has not started development yet. This isn't too surprising because in case you didn't realize this, the team that actually makes the Splatoon franchise is also comprised of the same team that makes Mario Kart. So they've just done back-to-back -back Splatoon games essentially with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe kind of filling in that gap. Chances are they're probably working on Mario Kart 9 right now. However, it's also true that they really can't get going on Splatoon 3 until they know the direction of the story. Now, to you guys, you might not care as much about the story from Splatoon, but I am someone that actually cares very deeply about the story of Splatoon. Uh, it has been very interesting. I don't know if you guys paid enough attention. I don't want to spoil it to you, but if you played the first game and the second game, especially those single-player modes, you learn a lot. The story is very deep, very dark in places actually and extremely entertaining and I really hope uh, that you guys give it a look if you are Splatoon players and happen you know just haven't dove into those modes please do yourself a favor and do it because the results of this multiplayer Splatfest are going to be huge on what happens in Splatoon 3 story-wise so uh, you know happy you know splatting out there you might wonder am I chaos in my order I have no idea yet I probably won't be uh, checking it out until tomorrow because i do have the podcast i got to take care of tonight uh and we'll probably do a live stream of some splatfest action at some point this weekend uh because it is the final one and splatoon 2 is actually near and dear to my heart with this channel we've uh come a long ways together as a channel with splatoon 2 so it's only it only feels proper to send it off in the final splatfest this story is actually going to be short and sweet Yokai Watch 4 is coming to the West. This is actually the first time it's been announced. The folks behind the game made this announcement at Anime Expo 2019. It was kind of unexpected and out of left field. They've been kind of flip-flopping every time they were asked in Japanese interviews if it was going to end up coming to the West. It's already released in Japan, and it's doing okay numbers in Japan. Not what, not really what Yokai Watch was doing in its heyday. However, the prior Yokai Watch that released on 3DS and came to the West actually performed pretty well sales-wise. So it's great to see that yokai watch 4 is actually going to be coming to the west now they didn't give any release dates or time frames you don't know if it's coming this year don't know if it's coming 2020 they likely want to find a, a, a fresh date that's not going to be overcrowded with nintendo's own games so i wouldn't be surprised if it's pushed into either early 2020 or summer 2020 so it can come out before or a month or two after animal crossing because animal crossing is obviously going to garner a lot of attention and nintendo's got a really packed slate already this year and with pokemon sword and shield coming out that it's kind of a similar sort of game so they might not want to come out around the same time as a new pokemon ip but still yokai watch 4 is coming to the west and that's a beautiful thing 
Damon X Machina just got a brand new overview trailer. It's huge. It's like three plus minutes long. It's in Japanese only. It was released by Marvelous. And you might not care about it so much because some people were kind of not impressed with the demo. Uh, reminder, the game does release September 13th, so it, it's coming out pretty soon. Here's the deal, though. In watching this trailer, it definitely looks like Marvelous has been taking feedback from that public demo very seriously. And that demo is still playable, by the way. I suggest you check it out. It actually almost sold me on the game because I don't like mech games, and something about this game just clicked for me. Now, I will admit it had performance issues, and that seemed to be the number one issue is all the frame rates, and then some people not liking the color palette. Well, as you're seeing in the footage right now, there's a lot more colors happening now compared to what we saw in that demo, which was really orange and reds and browns and uh, kind of like a Mars kind of feeling to it. Now we're seeing some actual colors added into this art style, and it's starting to look really damn good. Now, you're also noticing throughout all this footage that it's running really well. It looks like it doesn't have any frame rate dips from whatever that target is, whether it's 30 FPS, 60 FPS. It doesn't really look like it's dipping. It might actually be locked. Now, that's just saying something about an overview trailer, which is always going to show some of the best parts of the game. It's a marketing thing, so uh, whatever. You can go down in the description and watch the full three-plus minutes of it if you would like but it is interesting just to see that it definitely looks like a lot more polished version of the game than we got as a demo i honestly hope that they release a second demo for this game i think a lot of people are still going to be turned off by their own hands-on experience so you have a chance to get them back with a second demo especially if the improvements are as drastic as they appear to be uh, this is another game that i'm afraid like marvel ultimate alliance might get overlooked with other games coming out with astral chain coming out before it having Link's Awakening come out shortly after it. You know, I think it's a week after it. it it's going to be one of those situations where I'm afraid it's going to get overlooked when maybe it shouldn't be. So uh, let's just see what happens when it releases on September 13th. This last story is a weird one. Uh, it, it's kind of a repeat of something that happened at E3, but now being restated again just to kind of remind people how serious Nintendo is. Essentially, Nintendo is like honestly and truly looking deep into video game streaming. Now, they do admit that the Nintendo Switch does uh, a lot of what video game streaming offers in terms of some of the conveniences, but also they recognize some of the benefits of it. Remember, the Switch actually has game streaming already, in case you didn't realize it. Um, Resident Evil 7 and Assassin's Creed Odyssey are both playable in Japan exclusively through game streaming services. So, you could argue Switch is almost a bit of ahead of the curve compared to some other platforms uh, because it already has game streaming. It's just only in that single country and only with a couple games. Well, here's the deal. Nintendo's paying attention, and Doug Bowser actually had this to say to Fortune. The Switch delivers on a lot of the promises of streaming. It's a device where you can play anywhere, at any time, with anyone. It's obviously something that we're closely watching and looking at and understanding. Now, this might not seem much on its own, but this actually follows up quotes that he put out to Time Magazine back during E3, where he talked at length about how Nintendo was seriously looking into game streaming, how they're not going to do it right now, but they're not going to ignore the market. Now, this could mean a whole bunch of nothing and just be PR marketing speak. It also could mean that Nintendo is actually taking game streaming seriously. Uh, there's been rumors in the past that Nintendo's been working with Microsoft and xCloud to make their own potential streaming platform for some of their games, even if it's just for the classic library of games, a la what PlayStation has done, actually, where they have offered their classic games through a streaming service. It's possible Nintendo might be partnering with Microsoft to do the same thing. Although, obviously, we know with Project X Cloud, uh, Google Stadia, and others, they're talking about current games coming out, brand new games coming out, exclusive games in cases like Google Stadia coming out uh, that are going to be available on their platforms. And Nintendo hasn't really hinted that they're going to go down that route. In fact, they really haven't hinted they're going to do game streaming at all. What they are saying is they're aware of it they're acutely aware of it they're actually technically involved in it in japan and they aren't going to ignore if the market starts to shift that way they don't want the switch to be that platform that is left behind with future technology and what's interesting about game streaming is as long as your internet connection is good enough and you're within a decent range of one of the servers for these services uh the switch could actually massively benefit from having a game streaming service especially if you're at home and you're using the original Switch or the new version of the Switch coming out, uh, not the light version, but the replacement for the original, and you have a wired connection to the internet. Because see, what happens is you do that and you're actually able to enjoy 
full 1080p game streaming if these services came to Switch on your Switch docked on your TV. Obviously, you could attempt to do it wirelessly as well if you happen to have a really good wireless connection with your Switch and your router. I know some routers are more compatible with Switch than others. They're kind of using a weaker Wi-Fi card. It'd be nice to see them embrace Wi-Fi 6 someday, but uh, that's such a new technology. I, I wouldn't expect to see that anytime this generation anyways from Nintendo. But still, I find this whole thing very fascinating, and I really hope that uh, Nintendo does take it seriously because even if you hate game streaming, the last thing you want to see Nintendo do is be left behind, have the next Switch come out or the next whatever they make sell like garbage and then end up with 300, 400, 500 million people using game streaming services and Nintendo starts to become so far behind they almost lose their relevancy. Now keep in mind, I do think Nintendo will be the last company to ever fully switch over to game streaming because they do believe in physical games. Nintendo has publicly stated how much they believe in physical games. So if you enjoy physical games, Nintendo is the way to go at least you know in terms of some future um you know i don't know peace of mind i guess but again nintendo is paying attention to the technology they will dive in when they think it's right uh i just hope that when they do dive in because i think it's inevitable uh that they don't do what they did like with the nintendo switch online service they waited like a decade plus to finally dive into paid online services and then what we got was extremely under you know really underwhelming i hope that it doesn't take them a decade to get into these services only to release something that is so far behind where those services are at that time again obviously uh, much of the world isn't ready for it and you might not be into game streaming and i get that you know you just don't want nintendo to bother with it i understand but uh we have to realize that nintendo should be paying attention to these technologies it's another way to get more of their games into more people's hands and hey look Someday a future might exist where people could play all games from all platforms on any system because you could just have their streaming service, which is interesting. Uh, but if you still want the physical games, you'll have to own that platform, right? So it, it's very interesting to see that kind of gaming future moving ahead. Although I think a lot of us are already subscribed to so many services. Do you even realize how much you're spending per month? I actually did the math. I was spending like over $100 just on subscription services each month. Um, I'm starting to wonder if that's actually better than when I used to just have cable. Yeah. All right, folks. Anyways, I am Nathaniel Robojets from the Center Prime. I want to thank you for tuning in this episode of Prime News. If you enjoyed it, drop a like down in the description. Subscribe for more content. It's been real. It's been fun. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll catch all of you guys in the next video. So I was talking to Eric, and uh, he's like, hey, Nate, you know, I get paid now? Because I mentioned in the last episode that he gets paid, and uh, I had to remind him that no, and that continuity, which I can't even say the word, uh, is not something I'm great with. Because I said in the last Prime episode, I can't fire him technically because I don't pay him. But then I said, what am I paying you for anyways towards the end? So Eric, if you're watching this episode, I can't show it because it's green, but I've got some uh, some some green stuff here for you. I got, I got a whole dollar in your name for you so I could pay you. That way, live on the podcast, fire your ass.